kind of a cool story how this whole thing came about. And I don't know if everybody knows that it's based on something true. Yes, yeah, so Alex Blumberg um, uh, created this podcast. He worked for This American Life for a long time, and so he, this is all a true story. I mean, inspired by a true story. He um, he, had work, he was working at This American Life, and he said someone needs to someone needs to create a podcast channel because so many of these podcasts that he loved required more than just sitting with a microphone. They needed budget and travel and research and staff, and only NPR was really making them. And he said someone should do that. And he said, well, maybe I should do that. And his idea was to have the first podcast on the channel um, be a, a documentary about a guy who knows nothing about starting a business, starting a business. And so like an audio reality show, he recorded his whole life. He recorded his family. He recorded, by the way, I, I, should, I digress for a moment. The guy I'm pitching to playing Chris Saka is the real Chris Saka. So we asked him to play himself. He is the true, he's the real self-made billionaire uh, who funded Alex's dream project, and that has grown to become uh, Gimlet Media, which is one of the biggest uh, podcast companies there is. So we sort of optioned the, the story of, 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 the, of the podcast and turned it in, you know, used it as a jumping off point and turned it into to the, a show. And got one of our most favorite Scrubs writers, Mr. Matt Tarsus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, so when I, yeah, when I, when they brought the podcast to me, I said, they said, who do you, you know, would you be interested in this? And I said, I really love it. Um, you know, Matt Tarsus is one of my favorite writers on Scrubs. He's, he wrote uh, one of my, uh, I think, probably your favorite episodes, too. My Old Lady, which is one of the early episodes of Scrubs where... It's like the third. We had the third episode where um, we each lose a patient. And in my mind, it really early on showed the, the unique tone of Scrubs, uh, that, that it could be so silly and so broad and have physical comedy, but at the same time, you could go around the corner and it would be totally grounded and, and have real stakes. And so I wanted the show to be that. I mean, this show doesn't have, obviously, crazy surreal fantasies. But it is, it is that, as you saw, just a little sampling. It, it's, it's, it's funny. It's got some physical comedy. But it also um, really tries to land the, the heart of a, of a family. And it's going to have that, like, those, those songs at the end that get you. Like yeah, a little Josh Radin, Josh Radin um, Bob Dylan cover. Yeah. Josh Radin is a good friend of Zach's from forever, and he is an amazing musician and um, was part of the Scrub soundtrack many times. The soundtrack to two of my deliveries I delivered to Josh Radin. <laughs> yeah, these photographs, I think, is what Charlie was born to. Yeah, this is very, uh, very Oh, talented. your real life deliveries. Oh, yes. You lost me for a second. You play Josh Radin when you're giving birth. Yes, he's, okay. a, he's, he's a big part of my playlist. Oh, I bet Josh would love to know that. <laughs> I don't want to tell him that. <laughs> so you uh, assembled a ridiculously great cast. Yeah. Um, your chemistry with Tia is fantastic. What is it like to have a love interest who is not a black man? <laughs> <laughs> that was, I just want to say as a director, that was an incredibly delivered joke. Oh. <laughs> And you. You, don't, you do not need another take. Um, oh. that, um, but I would ask for one because my nickname on Scrubs, other than Second Becky, was also Sarah Wynn Morsey. Yeah. So I'd like to do that. We, Let me do that one more time. We would also, Sarah would always, there'd be like, we do, she'd done plenty of takes. <laughs> and it was all great. And they were all usable. And, she, and we were all tired and wanted to go home. And Sarah would go, wait, well, one more, one more. And we'd be like, oh. So we <laughs> called her that, Sarah Wynn Morsey. There was even a song. There was a song. Everyone with Scrubs had a song after years, and mine was Sarah Wynn Morsey, Sarah Wynn Morsey, she wants one. One more when she's had nine. Five, nine. Eleven. She wants one more when she's had nine. Um, I forgot. The question is about having sex with Donald. I forgot what the question was. It was. Everybody wants um, to know. Tia. Tia is amazing. You know, it's a, it was a tall order. The, the, the woman upon whom the show is based is a, is a Persian-American woman. And we wanted to, to have the biracial aspect because we thought it was really interesting and something that, that deserves more representation on, on TV. And so we, we wanted to also, uh, to, for her to be able to speak another language fluently, we liked that aspect of, of the show, of the podcast. So it was a tall order. You needed someone, um, a woman of color who was funny and uh, a great actress who could speak another language fluently. And Tia came in and she was so beautiful and she was hilarious, and she speaks Bengali fluently, and it was kind of like a, a actually, you, my, my second uh, love interest in a row, because you speak Ach, the language. Ach, Oh, God. <laughs> I speak every, two of the Romance languages. Every Jew loves it when you yell at them in German, but. Um, <laughs> 
I like that guy. I, I realize here no, I am bragging I'll see, I'll see. about Tia, but you speak two languages, three languages fluently. But we don't need to. It's not about you tonight, Sarah. It is a little bit. It's a little bit. It is. It's Tia's night. Uh, mais je voudrais parler français. Okay, uh, we know, we know. Those are probably just three phrases you have memorized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except for the fact that I went to school for 12 years. That's true. In that language. All right, go ahead. Um, go ahead. Tia's amazing. Tia's amazing. The kids were tricky the because. Kids are fantastic. How did you get those kids? That's hard to cast we kids saw like a, that. We saw a lot of kids, um, and of course, they had to look like they were believably our children. And um, the 13-year-old uh, boy, Alicia, is, 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 is a savant, like Doogie Howser genius. Him on the guitar? He, uh, yeah, they didn't see that. You just referenced it. They, they, him, him on the guitar? Him on the guitar? Yeah, on no, that thing? In a later episode. <laughs> he plays the guitar so incredibly well. I, I mean, I personally have never seen a child play the guitar this well. And he was doing it on, on the pilot just for fun. And we, Matt and I were like, well, we're obviously writing that into an episode. Oh, see, so he wrote with, into, with him, he gets written in for like amazing guitarists. With, with Scrubs, with Bill, it would be like, I would like fall flat on my face and spill all over myself. And they'd be like, and do something really dorky. And they're like, we're writing that in. That's Well, one of the things we, we got from Scrubs was, one thing I learned from watching Bill, uh, Lawrence and, and, and Matt and the other people at Scrubs is, you can clap for Bill, Bill Lawrence. I think Bill deserves a clap. He, uh, he would often take things from our real lives and put it right into the show. I mean, a lot, it just got to the point where he would ask Donald and I what, I did, what we did that weekend, <laughs> and, 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 we, and we'd tell him a funny story, and then like a week later, we'd be like, what the hell? You have to be so careful what stories you told. How did you put this in the script? <laughs> um, and so... We tried to do that. We tried to, I, I think that's a really way, great way to get um, really you know, good stuff and, and figure out who the characters are. Mm -hmm. So for example, this little boy, playing, Alicia, playing this guitar so amazingly, it was like, whoa, it's so interesting and he's so smart. We have to find ways to, to use this stuff. He, was also, he also was a, a budding magician, so we used that, obviously. And that's so cool. I, um, in the episode, he you know, just picks up the guitar and then is gifted at it. And I um, was given a guitar and I packed it when I moved to LA and packed up my car and I was like Steve Martin from The Jerk, I bought the most random things and one of them was this like guitar that I had never played and I was like, I'm gonna play this. And I think it came to my Scrubs dressing room. Because you your plan was to learn in your Scrubs dressing room? And I, yeah, I think I learned the first few um, chords of, of Free Falling from Tom Petty and to this day that's all I can play. <laughs> that's all I can play. It's hard, it's hard It would be great so. if anyone had a guitar now we could hear, but. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's all, that's all I got. Um, okay, so, and the, the, your daughter is fantastic. Yeah, uh, Odyssey is amazing, and she's uh, talented. And, you know, they're, they're, they're really good actors. I mean, we, I, you know, I, I have them improv on set, and they're just quick, and, and um, it's, a really, it's a really good group. And, of course, Michael Imperioli, who, oh. when, we were, when we were writing, yeah, you can clap so for Michael Imperioli. Thanks. When we were writing the pilot, well, Matt and I kept slipping into this sort of, of Michael Imperioli impression. And, and we, then we auditioned a bunch of people and they weren't as good as our Michael Imperioli impression. <laughs> so we were like, no, this is crazy, but maybe we should ask Michael Imperioli. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if he wants to do comedy or what he's up to these days, but, uh, but um, uh, and then we, we showed him the script and he loved it and, and he said yes. 